Do you think your acceptance of yourself as a disabled person led to this love you have? I'm not sure because I was still on my journey towards acceptance when I met Charisma. So I think part of the deep love I feel for her is how she has shown me that who I am is a lovable person. Did she help you accept yourself more? Yeah. No. <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop doing this, man. Wait, let me zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It seems like you still get butterflies when you think about charisma. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Describe those butterflies. I don't know, man. She just has a way of making me feel like a 16-year-old again. <laughs> I love his eyes. They're, they're just so nice to look at. And he's so funny. He's really funny and he makes me laugh a lot. I would love her smile the most. Thank you. I really do. <laughs> it has a way of just disarming me, making me feel warm, <laughs> making me feel comfortable. Yeah. And um, just look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> You're making me blush. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And that's why I wrote a song about it. I'm saying it to her and asked her to marry me. Because I want to see that smile for her. And that was our first dance to that song. Mm -hmm. It was great. She's cool. <laughs> I can't describe it any more than that. I don't know. It's just there. It's just there. It. People in love know. I owe a lot to you, my love. I owe a lot to you. It's real. You helped me accept myself too. Yeah? Yes, it goes both ways, babe. Mm. <laughs> Tell me about your injury. I am a C5, C6 quadriplegic. And so that means I have no hand function at all, um, other than I can use my wrist. So I'm not actually moving my fingers into a fist. I'm just pulling my wrist back. I have no tricep function, so my arm just falls and I can't reach back up. Um, I have no sensation from here down. I can't feel the outside of my arms or my hands, but I can feel my thumbs. And can't use my legs or my core at all. Disabled people can be loved and they can give love. Um, I've never felt more love from anyone else in my life, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> I do so bad without you by my side. I do much better when you're with me. Do you notice that Charisma is more confident when you're around her? Yeah, and I don't get why. <laughs> you don't need me. Don't you don't need me at all. <laughs> you're good to go. But hey, if she feels better with me, that's okay. I like that too. How did you acquire this injury? When I was 16 years old, I went with a few of my friends down to the James River, which flows through the city of Richmond and it's rapids down there, so it's very fast moving water. And I was a strong swimmer growing up, so that wasn't really a worry to me, um, but I did not account for when I dove into the water and I hit a rock just below the surface, right on the top of my head. And immediately that's when I shattered the C4, C5, C6, and T1 vertebrae in my neck, but I damaged the spinal cord at five and six, and um, instantly couldn't use my body. So I was just floating, floating away down river. Um, and my friend saw me before I was swept away and was able to grab me and tow me back to the side of the river. And um, the paramedics came and, and got me out of there. And the paramedics were like, all right, can you feel this? I'm like, no. Like, can you feel this? I'm like, no. Can you feel this? I'm like, dude, <laughs> no, I can't feel any of that. Uh, so they knew what was going on. I didn't really know. I just, I thought it was like a stinger or something where you like, you hit a nerve wrong. <laughs> I did hit a nerve wrong, <laughs> the, the spinal cord nerve. Uh, but the most haunting memory for me was when I, I was laying there and I kind of looked up to where my friend was sitting on the rocks. And at this point, a bunch of people had showed up and were helping. So he kind of like moved off for a second. And he was just like holding his knees against his chest, like rocking back and forth. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, ooh, that's not good. It's so easy when someone throws a term like paralysis at you to immediately make all these assumptions in your head about what your life is going to be like. And I did the same thing. Like I didn't think I could do half the things I've done. There was 
certainly emotional trauma because so much of my identity at that time was wrapped up in my physicality because I was a, I was a strong athlete like I thought I, well I don't I don't think like I had a plan to go to college to play lacrosse and um, like I was getting recruited and stuff so like that was probably gonna happen and that was like my whole world was sports and so when you lose your body and that's your whole world it's like you've lost your whole world the first few days right after my injury were particularly rough when it was all just crashing down and I it got to the point where I was depressed enough to ask my brother uh, he came over to the bed and I, I had just I had an alphabet board and I spelled out on the alphabet board letter by letter K-I-L-L-M-E I didn't make it to the second L before he just walked away it's like no um, but that's that's where I was and I had to claw my way out of that space man I just wish I had a video of my life now that I could show 16 year old Cole because then be like all right we're good to go it's weird to say but in a lot of ways I'm I think my life now is better than it would have been tell me about when you first met Cole um, when I first met Cole, I was very nervous. Um, I saw him because I had worked at a rehab center and he was a client. He was never my patient. We always make sure to tell people that. Mm -hmm. um, but I had saw him from a distance. And I remember our first interaction, I just said, I was walking by him and I said, hello. And then he said, hi back, super flirtatious. And I was like, mm -hmm. wait, is he flirting with me? And I was, I was, I was. so, com <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, wait a minute. She was working at the hospital for like a year uh, while I was there working out in the other part of the gym. So I would just kind of just see her from a distance walking around. I was like, wow, she's cute. And I'll see her smiling with patients, having conversations. I was like, wow, she's cute. <laughs> and then finally, when uh, my therapist brought it to my attention that she was single, I looked at her and said, she's really cute. <laughs> First time I saw Cole, I got extreme butterflies. I thought he was very cute and I didn't think he would be into me. Um, and so I was very shy and I just didn't really approach it. Um, but I just wanted him to notice me. So I tried to do it in a friendly way by going over and asking his therapist if they needed help. One of our first interactions was when I was on what's called the functional electrical stimulation bike. So it's a bike that they put my legs in the pedals and they put these pads on my legs and my booty that shocked the muscles into contracting to operate the bike. And so I was on this bike at the end of my workout. So I'm already tired, exhausted, probably smell bad. My hair is disheveled. And uh, she, she comes over and I learned later that she did this on purpose because she wanted to see me. Uh, she came over, asked if she could help and she started taking me off the bike. That was my way of like, getting him to notice me but I just he just had such a warm smile and so open and so charming and it was a great first impression although he doesn't think the same but I thought it was great and so I'm trying to be charming and I'm tired and it's just not working and just like crap man I ruined it but apparently it didn't phase her at all because she, uh, she still hit me up on Instagram <laughs> what were you thinking when you liked his Instagram photos so he liked mine first, and I knew if I returned the likes, I was going to show him I was interested. So I I was tactful, and I actually liked maybe like 10 of his pictures, and he liked three of mine. So I, I wanted to make sure he knew. It had been a while before, you know, someone saw me in that light and wanted to give me a chance like that. And I was like, oh, she's so cool. She's really cute. <laughs> I should uh, I should make a move. So I was like, all right, let's follow her back. Let's like some pictures. Let's calculate it to, you know, go far back, but not too far back. That is weird. So there's a lot of, you know, mental calculations going on there. And I guess I played it right because she liked some of my pictures and I slid in to the DMs. Um, but I was, I was very nervous. And when she came over the first time to hang out, I was even more nervous then. I was like, oh man, I might have to have a drink or something to calm my nerves. I'm just like... Uh, I want this to go so well, and it did.
What's it like to be in a marriage where one person is disabled and one person is not disabled? I would say it is not as different as people think it is, but there are things that are different. So like we, we have had to be more intentional with like how we split up responsibilities and like things around the house because there are certain things that I can't do. And so let's figure out what I can do so that all of that burden is on charisma. Mm -hmm. So like we've had to figure out that balance. And also, um, there's a lot of like openness that has to come with this situation because mm -hmm. she helps with a lot of the caregiving duties, and all of it. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, that, right now. <laughs> yeah, and so that's that's an intimate thing to learn mm -hmm. and to do for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is a, an extra element that other able-bodied couples wouldn't have. I think it brings us closer together. Yeah, it does. Like I just feel like a lot of couples like don't understand that level of intimacy unless mm -hmm. they do it you know unless they have mm -hmm. that and it's just so different but i i think it brings us closer together yeah i think at the beginning of our relationship i was really concerned with how i was going to handle everything um i wanted to be strong enough for cole and i wanted to be able to i'm very independent so I wanted to be able to like do it all. I wanted to be his wife and I wanted to care for him just because I wanted our relationship to be between the two of us. And it's kind of hard having like someone else come over and help Cole. And then it's, it just almost feels like someone else was in the middle. I didn't want that side of being in a relationship with me to deter her from wanting to be with me. Um, and that's just self-consciousness. That's my insecurity. I, you know, I'm not proud of that, but it was, it was hard not to feel that way because I'm not stoked that I have to do or use a catheter to go to the bathroom. Like, that's not fun. Like, I'm not stoked that I have to have this whole system that I have to hook up to so that I can relieve myself throughout the night. Like, I'm not stoked about that. But I had to get over that because she was already over it. She didn't care about it. And I had, I had to connect that. It was weird. I was projecting my own insecurities onto her. And that was unfair of me. I wasn't nervous at all to learn, you know, how to care for him because that's kind of what I did at my job. I didn't want her to feel like I was in a relationship so that someone could help me with these things. I wanted to fall in love with her and I wanted her to fall in love with me before we started introducing those other things. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. I want to, I would say the reason I learned things quicker is because I kind of pushed them. I was like, yeah. I want to learn because in order for us to have our relationship, our individual relationship, I needed to learn. The more I got to know her, the more I trusted her when she said that she doesn't care about that stuff. It just took me a while to come around and be like, okay, she really doesn't. She doesn't care. You can be comfortable. You can teach her these things. She's not going to lose her love for you. Just get over it, Cole. Be a big boy. <laughs> Do you two have to face any societal obstacles? Mm -hmm. mm. So yes, um, you know, being interabled, I think we face a lot of hurdles physically. So with accessibility, with you know, ableism. There's there's so many things when it comes to being an interabled couple that we deal with on a daily basis. But we also deal with issues being an interracial couple too and people's mm -hmm. perspective on that. So it's like kind of like a double whammy here and people just um, may not view our relationship like in a nice way. But the biggest thing is really being interracial. And I think a lot of people forget that. I think a lot of people forget that we are an interracial couple because they see Cole's wheelchair and then a lot of our, a lot of what we talk about is being interabled and you know Cole's disability, but we we don't talk about the race aspect much at all. And I think we get the most like pushback when it comes to being interracial, and that has been the hardest for me because I've been targeted, you know, with those racial slurs and and dealing with those challenges um, a lot more because most of the people come after me. You guys are YouTubers. You're public figures. What's it like to be a YouTuber in an interabled, interracial relationship? Because we're so different, we also draw a lot of attention, some positive, some negative. Um, a lot more positive than negative 
But there are people that aren't happy with interracial relationships in this day and age, which sucks, but that's the reality. We had to block certain words on YouTube because people were calling me animal names um, and people were calling me very um, racial slurs. There are so many assumptions about the interabled part of our relationship too, where, you know, people assume I'm just with her because I, I just want someone to take care of me and like do everything and clean the house and stuff like that. And I was like, no, that's no, 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 no. A lot of people um, question why I'm with Cole and why Cole is with me, um, mostly based on race. And they assume that I desperately wanted a white man that like I couldn't get any other man. So I had to get someone who was in a chair or um like if cole would be with me if i if he wasn't if he weren't in a chair would he be with me because base because i'm black um or cole could only find a black woman today because black women are are more helpful and more like they're the help in in a sense not only are those racist questions mm -hmm. but those are ableist questions yeah. as well and i don't know it's it's a bummer that people you know that's a thought in your head because can't you see the love is there mm -hmm. and if the love is there why does any of that matter what do you hope people think when they hear about your life together yeah i hope people think that we're cool <laughs> i hope people look at our relationship and and say hey like this is normal like this is a beautiful relationship they are in love they are happy I knew from that first date that there was something special going on. How could you tell? Just the vibe, you know? Certain people have a certain energy, and when you spend, you know, a night with them, and you're just that comfortable, you're that synced, and you're, you're engaged with each other, you're invested in learning about each other, I just felt... I don't know like magical I know that's, that's such a corny word to put on it but I don't know when did you realize that you wanted to marry Cole <laughs> probably the first date honestly um after our first day I went home and looked up wheelchair weddings because I wanted to see pictures and there were a lot on Pinterest actually I was I was quite surprised but um yeah the first date it went so well and it was so easy for me to be myself and he was just so loving. Um, yeah, it was very, it was very fast and it's my, maybe a little weird to say, but right away. I firmly believe that everyone is deserving of love. Everyone is capable of giving love. And if you can give love, then there's someone out there who is, who wants to receive that love. I, I can guarantee you. And, um, and you might have insecurities. I have insecurities. Everybody has insecurities, but allow yourself the opportunity because love can come knocking at any moment. Be ready for it and just embrace it because it's a beautiful thing. Now I like look at him as a dad, which is really cool. Cause now we have a dog and I'm like, okay, now we can think about like future with babies and stuff. And like, I never really envisioned that until we got married and really started talking about it. And it just makes me so happy because he would be the best dad ever. I just imagine like little babies crawling up on his lap. So cute. Oh my goodness. See, she had to so make a... Mean. Oh, spasm. Oh. <laughs> You're good. So if you had to make a, a showing in the video. Oh. Hi. Hi, Sophie. You're interrupting. Mm, can you go back down? Right, go off. Off. Good girl. Lay down. Oh, sorry. Lay down. Lay down. Yeah. Good girls. Lay down. Stay. Thanks, Sophie. Good girl. Cole, what is a spasm? Uh, uh, so that was a muscle spasm that you just witnessed. And um, just because she put some pressure on my legs, it triggered my back to spasm. So I went backwards. Mm -hmm. And it's... Oh, now it's doing it again. Ugh. And that's uh, totally involuntary. I can't control that. It just happens sometimes. Now Sophie's like, what's happening? Yeah. Nope. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Down. No, sorry. I'm getting her excited. Stay, stay. Yeah, so... The first time I had a spasm after my injury, I was like, oh, I, I, I'm moving my muscles. And I realized, oh, no, I'm not. It's just a natural thing mm -hmm. that happens.
What were some things that surprised you as somebody who entered the disability community as a 16 year old? Ooh, well, you know, I would tell you that I did not enter the disability community as a 16 year old. Um, and that is because I had a hard time identifying with being in a wheelchair. I'm, I didn't really want to, you know, and so I wouldn't really hang out with other people in the community who are in wheelchairs. Like I might call someone for some advice every now and then, but I didn't go to social gatherings or outings and all that sort of stuff. And um, I don't know why it was silly of me to think that way, but it was, it was when I started coaching wheelchair basketball and then hanging out with, you know, the youth that are athletes and seeing them, like I learned so much from those kids with just accepting themselves who they are, how they hung out with each other, interacted, how they, you know, worked so hard at practice. And that made, that shifted my perspective. And I was like, this community is awesome. Like, I love these people. These are my people, you know? And then ever since then, I was like, all right, this is who I am. I'm okay with this. I love it, you know? And now it's like my favorite part of myself is being part of the disability community. It just took me a little while to come around. Would you say your quality of life has improved since you had that change in perspective? Oh yeah. Yeah, my quality of life has definitely improved um, because I feel more active. I feel more engaged. A lot of times people push, you can do anything if you try. Why is it important to accept there's some things you just can't do? Well, I think it's important because having realistic expectations makes it easier to maintain a positive mindset in my mind. Mm -hmm. So like if I, if I say to myself, oh, if I rehab real hard this month, you know, maybe I'll get some function back in my legs. All right. So I'm going to work my butt off for a month, but the chance, like the reality is that's probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing to do with me, my willpower, my motivation, my drive. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It's just how my injury is. I'm not going to get that back no matter how hard I try. And so just accepting that being like, okay, that's fine. I have a wheelchair. I can still get around. I can't use my legs, but let's, you know, let's figure out what I can do with the mobility that I do have. Yeah. And then once I start finding things I can do, I can be more positive. I can be, you know, more confident in my own abilities. What's your favorite thing about Cole? His personality. I, I just love how happy he is and positive. It just makes me so happy and just brings my, my day makes my day great um, in his eyes. Another question I get all the time is, if you could go back to the day of your accident, would you stop yourself? Which is a pretty heavy question. Initially, I mean, your assumptions, of course, I'd want to stop that because of course you'd want to be able-bodied over being paralyzed. But I don't really know if that's the case. And even before Charisma, I kind of felt that way because of all of the relationships I've met or uh, I made after my accident. Like I have lifelong friends now, all awesome people who I never would have met had I not been injured. And I have a perspective now that I, I feel is powerful and makes me a better person. And I never would have had that without having been injured. And so would I really go back and take those things from myself? No, I don't think I would. And where I am today, I've never felt more strongly about that because I'm with Charisma and I'm married to the woman of my dreams. I'm living in an amazing house. I have a dog now. I have a business with the woman of my dreams that is, is successful and we're making a positive change in the world. Are you serious? This is the dream, man. You know, why would I take this from myself? Before we turn off the camera, is there anything else either you would like to say? Uh, we appreciate this yeah. and working with you. This is awesome. Um, a big hello to the SBSK community yes. and family. Uh, you all are awesome and so, so supportive of the mission. Yeah. And um, we love that. We're so grateful. I mean, this is, it's great working with Chris and like finally, meeting the SBSK family, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, 
stay positive. That's what we always say after <laughs> yeah, all right. of our videos. Yes, um, be yeah. sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. <laughs> And, and stay, stay positive. positive. <laughs> and what is the name of your YouTube channel so everyone can go subscribe? Yes. It is Roll with Cole. And Charisma. That's, That's us. me. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> obviously, we're awkward and weird, so come join us. <laughs>